everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Samantha. I go by she or her pronouns, and I'm so excited to be your host for today's um, accounting and finance session as part of Ryerson's virtual open house, which is taking place from November 9th to the 13th and 16th to the 20th. There are many sessions taking place across these two weeks. We encourage you to visit our website and register for any other sessions that may interest you. To start, I would like to read the land acknowledgement. So Ryerson and Toronto are in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. And to me, the land acknowledgement is just a consistent reminder of our need to amplify more Indigenous voices, as well as the work that still needs to be done towards truth and reconciliation. Now, Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have put together a series of virtual sessions in order to share much of the information we would have shared with you in person. Ryerson is working diligently to provide students with fulsome experiences while maintaining the health and safety of our community. Now I wanna share a few Zoom housekeeping tips before we get started. We encourage you to ask questions. We have many faculty and staff members here to answer your questions. To do so, click the Q&A pod to open the dialogue window and type your questions throughout the presentation. If you're having any audio or video issues, feel free to flag it in the Q&A box and one of our staff members will be happy to try and assist you. You may rearrange your screen in any way that suits you best. And please note that rearranging your screen does not impact the way that others are viewing this presentation. This presentation will also be closed captioned to ensure accessibility. If you require closed captioning, please select that option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Also note that the majority of our virtual open house sessions will be available on our website a little later on. Now we'd like to send off a quick poll to see who is joining us today. So feel free to answer and let us know who is joining us. Are you a prospective student applying for fall 2021? Are you a prospective student potentially looking to apply to us in the future? Maybe you're a college or university transfer student. Perhaps you're a parent or a guardian looking for some more information. Or maybe you are a teacher or a counselor guiding some of your students on accounting and finance. I'm gonna leave the poll open for a couple more seconds as answers filter on through. So definitely feel free to um, contribute. And that's one of the really great things about having a virtual open house is we are able to connect with folks from across Canada and from around the world who might not have been able to join us in person. So I'm going to end the poll right now. And wow, it looks like 92% of you are looking at applying to us for fall of 2021. No matter what stage of the admissions process you are at, welcome to our session. And we hope you take away a lot of great information from this session. And I'll just share those results really quickly. Awesome. Now, I uh, don't want to delay this presentation any further. So without further delay, I'd love to introduce you to Catherine Hollis from the Ted Rogers School of Management, as well as Alan from the Ted Rogers School of Management. So take it away, you two. And Alan, feel free to close that poll. There you go. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of our staff that are making uh, today uh, everything it can be, and, and they will make it everything they can be. So if you have any questions as time goes on, please don't hesitate to, to share with, uh, with us. My name's Alan Kaplan. I am the chair of the finance department. Uh, we have a chair of a finance department, a chair of an accounting department, and uh, I'm the chair of the finance department within the School of Accounting and Finance. I'm going to be your host for the next 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'm going to turn it over to all the experts that we have, students and staff, who will be able to answer your questions and share a bit more with you. Oh, that's too bad. Working on it, guys. There we go. I'll give you a couple of seconds to have a look through these slides, or this slide, and I can talk to it a bit. Thank you. What I want to, sorry about that. What I want to share with you regarding this slide is that we will work with you to make sure that you present yourself as professionally as possible when the time comes. Uh, and that includes verbal and written communications. 
It includes teamwork. It includes leadership, the ability to work collaboratively. Uh, it very much includes, of course, uh, numeracy skills. Uh, and attention to detail means you know your stuff. Uh, high ethical standards is something that we encourage. In fairness, you bring most of that already into the program with you. But having said that, where we can work on it with you, we do. I'll give you another couple of seconds. Hmm, how can I put this? I'd like to sum this up by saying, we think you're gonna get a job. Uh, you are looking at the Ted Rogers School of Management, approximately at Dundas and Young, and that's where you'll be spending most of your time. You'll have some classes in other places, but that's where you'll be spending most of your time, whether you're in class, whether you're working with a club, as soon as this COVID uh, thing is over. You may not know what AACSB accredited means. It basically means we run a good business program. Uh, and in fact, only a few schools in North America are so accredited. There are six separate schools in the Ted Rogers School of Management. We are the School of Financial Accounting. Where's the six separate school? There it is. Uh, you will be taking classes, of course, specific to accounting and finance, but you'll also be taking other classes uh, in the university at large and at Ted Rogers uh, that involve other types of courses. We're going to talk about that really in just about one minute. I think I'm going to spend a bit of time on this. Please take a second and look at it. Your job is to figure out where you want to go. Hopefully you'll get in anywhere you want to go. Uh, but your job is to figure out where you want to go. Um, and these are reasons why you might choose uh, TRSM for accounting and finance. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of features. One, uh, we have the largest co-op program in the country. No, not everybody wants to take co-op. If you take co-op, you'll end up going for five years instead of four years, right, or something along those lines, possibly. But having said that, uh, lots of students want to take co-op. If you are a good student and you want to take co-op, we will almost certainly, we're going to talk more about it in a couple of minutes, have an opportunity for you. Uh, yes, uh, state-of-the-art facilities, urban, vibrant, and diverse, and all those good things. Um, but I'll add a couple of other features that I think are good reasons to choose accounting and finance at TRSM that help you prepare for the workplace. Uh, one is co-op, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. But second, you'll develop your interpersonal skills. You'll develop your ability to work with other people, I think. You'll do that in student clubs. You'll do that because some of your profs, I hope most dear profs, excuse the language, give a damn and want to be helpful. Uh, and so you'll work in some cases with your profs, you'll work with other students and student clubs. As I say, you'll be in one building for the most part. And so it'll be easy to connect with people. I understand during COVID that's not happening, but hopefully I sure as heck hope by next uh, fall it will happen. So co-op, the opportunity um, uh, to work with professors that, excuse the language, give a damn and also uh, being able to connect with students, in addition to all the other good stuff on this slide. Okay, uh, the next six or seven slides are about uh, the program, how it actually works, and it's important that you know that so you can make a rational decision on what you want to do and where you want to go. Uh, it's a four-year program if you don't, you know, do anything else or take fewer courses or do co-op. Essentially, uh, it might be a little longer if you do co-op, uh, your first two years, you get a few choices, but it's mostly set out for you. It's a combination of finance and accounting and other courses. Talk about that in a sec. And then your third or fourth years, you will specialize. You'll choose at the end of your second year. Uh, you'll choose whether you want to major in finance or major in accounting. Hopefully by that time, you'll have a better feel. Uh, you may feel you know right now, which is great. Maybe you do. But of course, you'll be taking finance and accounting courses in the first two years, and that will help shape for you your thought process as to what you might want to do for a career. Hmm. There's a lot of stuff on this slide. What we're trying to tell you is if you look at the very bottom of the slide, it says one liberal studies elective, one liberal studies elective. You take approximately five courses every semester, and four of those are set out for you. 
And they are all the sort of things that we think you need in the first year to prepare you for the time after that. So when you're looking at quantitative business analysis, QMS 130, or when you're looking in the second term at introductory financial accounting or principles of finance, you're looking at courses that will set you up for the other courses in the program, along with the communication skills courses, which are a big part from my perspective of what we need to give you. I'm going to, uh, don't take the time to go into this in too much detail. The point is, give or take half of your courses in the first year are taken with students in the business management program because we want you to get a feel for what business is all about. And then of course, approximately half of the courses are taken with students in the School of Accounting and Finance uh, as we also want to be somewhat more specific to your particular needs. Once again, you don't have to look at the slide. You can just look at the last comment. We have five courses in the program, three courses in first year, where you have to get a C plus. Look, you get a D minus, you'll pass the course, but you won't be able to go on to other courses, certain other courses in the program, unless you get a C plus or better on uh, five courses in our program that we think are essential if you want to go on to either accounting or finance. As you might imagine, uh, these three, two are finance and one is quantitative business analysis. With any luck at all, it won't be a problem, but it's something we want to share with you. It's important for us that the students in upper years have the right uh, foundry, have the right uh, uh, starting point, and that means a C plus in these courses. I'm not, I'm not going to go too much detail on this one uh, or this one, other than to say you have to take a writing uh, test and a math test at time zero in your first semester to identify any weaknesses you have, even though we know you've got good marks from high school. And if you do have any weaknesses, most students don't. They do fine on these. But if you do have any weaknesses, our job is to help you. So if you don't do well on these, it's actually a good thing because then we'll get you, whether it's the math test or the English test, we'll get you extra help or we'll encourage you to take certain courses so that it will be easier for you in later years, which I think is a terrific um, uh, aspect of the program. Second year, don't need to go into too much detail. Uh, there are some business courses as there were before and there are perhaps um, a few more accounting and finance courses. Okay, and that's the, go back up again, that's the first two years of the program. And um, uh, getting into the third and fourth year, we won't talk too much about it, but you'll specialize in whatever you need. What I want to sort of migrate into now is talking a little bit about the career pathways that we support as a program. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is the CPA uh, pathway for accountants, um, uh, which is a common pathway uh, that uh, many accounting students will want to follow. You don't have to, but it's a common pathway, and it is sort of the gold standard for um, public accounting. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a pretty fancy looking um, slide. But the important part is before you get to what's called the common final examination, that block in green, before you get there, you have to go through a fairly rigorous educational and training program. And some universities, not all, some universities provide that entire program. We provide that entire program. So first of all, the courses you will take, which are even before what is listed here, the courses that you will take uh, in your accounting major in particular, will line you up for what's called prerequisite education. And then we have a separate program after you graduate uh, that over a period of three or six months uh, will uh, get you the prerequisite education and what are called the PEP modules so that you can work towards your common final examination, which allows you to get the CPA. And there's some boxes here and this and that, but you get the idea. In the case of finance, or in the case of accounting, uh, we want to share with you uh, that some of our facilities will help you get to where you need to go. A great example are our Bloomberg terminals. Once again, a few schools might have such things, but for the most part, um, we are very fortunate 
Uh, they cost a lot of money. And on a very positive note, we've got lots of students to take advantage of them. Bloomberg terminals provide uh, real life, real time uh, data and other information that's not generally available, some of it is, generally available on the web. Uh, our facility doesn't quite look like this, but the screens look like that. Uh, you're looking at a major bank, but we have the same setup in our own little floor. Uh, we also uh, have all sorts of uh, market simulation programs. If you're in finance, for example, you can buy and sell and that sort of thing. Uh, instructors may use these facilities and these platforms uh, to help you learn. We want to share with you. So I'm going to move a little bit away now from, um, uh, from the uh, CPA sort of pathway or the CFA pathway. I'll come back to it to talk to you a little bit. Uh, about the type of teaching you're going to get. It's going to be very practical. Um, uh, look, there, you have to learn some theory in, it, in order to understand the concepts that you're going to practice. But having said that, we put a lot of uh, emphasis on real life examples and, and working through real life examples. And that actually means these days you're not going to be using a calculator. Um, I'll give you a second to look through this. For the most part, uh, and this is uh, this particular slide is geared to finance students, but it applies equally to accounting students to some extent. Uh, you're going to find that uh, we integrate Excel into most, not all, most of our finance and some of our accounting courses and that you will be required to do your work on Excel and submit your work on Excel, et cetera. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here on other uh, software that you're going to learn other than to say, you are not going to be limited to Excel. You're gonna be pushed, you're gonna be encouraged uh, to develop other software skills that absolutely are important for the type of jobs you'll be applying for down the line. I'll briefly tell you about the Chartered Financial Analyst uh, designation, the CFA, CFA Institute um, uh, supervises and uh, validates perhaps the most recognized certification in the investment management world, the CFA. Uh, we are uh, pretty tightly connected uh, to the CFA Institute in that um, some of our, our courses actually incorporate some of their materials. Uh, last on this uh, page, talking about real life in the extreme, uh, we currently have two courses. Uh, they are not open to everyone. You have to apply. But having said that, uh, we have two courses that manage a real life half a million dollar equity portfolio. Uh, there is an instructor and the instructor execute, executes the trades, but the students uh, divide up into industry sectors and they're the ones that make the decisions. Moving out of the academic piece, I want to share with you and encourage you, if you come to Ryerson, it doesn't matter where you go, be part of the campus, be part of the student groups. It'll help you get jobs. And I mean, that's a very practical reason, but of course, it'll help you develop as a person and hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. And we have student clubs and there's more than go on that left-hand side, it's just how much of a page do you want to fill up? And there's uh, more on the right-hand side too, case competitions, TEDx stuff, uh, speaker series. Uh, they're actually getting more attendance right now, it appears, at least the ones I've heard about, uh, in, in the online environment, but I sure as heck am hoping that by the time you come next year or after, that uh, this will be in person. You may not remember the old Maple Leaf Gardens. You may be too young for that. I remember it. Anyway, it's not an old Maple Leaf Gardens anymore. Um, there are some state-of-the-art facilities at Ryerson, depending upon your needs. And the Mattamy Athletic Center is one of those state-of-the-art facilities. And I have a few slides here. Sorry about that. Similarly, our Student Learning Center, uh, don't have too many slides on it, but it's an opportunity. Some of my, uh, I'm also an instructor in addition to being the chair of the department, and some of my students in groups often go there to uh, practice their presentations uh, every 
and not every room. There are many rooms that you can book that have uh, large video monitors, and so you can practice your presentations there. Uh, and of course, uh, do work uh, solo and otherwise. Uh, they really are terrific facilities. You will, if you take advantage of it, um, you will find that there are lots of opportunities to listen to and interact uh, with industry leaders, and in some cases, government leaders, depending upon the circumstance. Sometimes they'll come into the classroom. More likely, there will be large auditorium-filled rooms where you'll be part of that. That, by the way, is not one of the five people listed. That's the co-founder of Apple, uh, Steve Wozniak, who uh, has come in to chat with us. So we do get uh, a good selection of people for a variety of reasons, and not the least because we are right downtown in the financial center of the country. Don't know if you know what you're looking at. Um, you're looking at the NBA trophy uh, that the Raptors won, uh, uh, not this past year, but the year before. And uh, it was brought into Ryerson because one of our executives in residence um, is a uh, senior uh, advisor slash counsel to the Toronto Raptors. And, uh, and we asked him, you know, can you bring in the trophy so the students can have a look, see and get close, close up. And, and he said, sure and made it happen. More generally, that helps us bring people uh, of note onto campus, the connections we have. I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at that. Thanks. Okay. We have a very active uh, international exchange program and on a very positive note, um, lots of, lots, a fair number of our students take advantage of it. Uh, you'll get credits. I don't know if it says so there, but you get credits for the uh, university courses you take in, at these other institutions in different parts of the world, uh, mostly speaking English, but not always, depending upon the circumstance. Okay, I do want to talk about co-op because I think, from my experience, that is a big deal. Uh, to lots of students, not to all students, but to lots of students. And so there's a fancy little circle here. And uh, I'm going to uh, briefly go down some of the features associated with that circle. At the end of year one, uh, first year, you're going to take your courses end of subject. At the end of year one, if you qualify, uh, you can enter into the co-op stream. Uh, you have to have a CGPA of three or more. That's a B average or plus, as the case may be. And there's an interview required. Um, simply put, uh, we don't want you going out if you feel, uh, if you don't feel confident in how you comport yourself, and we'll help you with that, right? And so the interview is designed uh, to make sure um, that you present yourself well and that you communicate well and all those good things. Once again, we'll help you if you don't. TRSM, that's not Ryerson, that is just the Ted Rogers School of Management has 1,500 students co currently in co-op. I know the guy who runs it and uh, he's not gonna settle for that even. That means that you have a very, what that means, the only important part, you have a very good chance of getting into co-op if you qualify. The first part of that, this bullet, basically says that everybody that was admitted into co-op got a co-op placement um, for you know, each of their work terms. There's four different work terms, four different four month work terms, maybe three, but probably four different four month work terms uh, within your university experience. And I'm always amazed that all of our students who get admitted into co-op, they all get placements. Now, this has, ironically, the one time when this wasn't 100% placement rate was this past summer uh, because of COVID, where employers said, I'm sorry, we're not, you know, we agreed to hire, but we're not going to hire. That, however, we're even getting past that. So we're building up again. And I have every expectation uh, that as COVID uh, works its way through the process, um, we'll get back up to our 100% placement rate, which is just tremendous. Here's an example of some of our co-op employers. 
Some of these employers are the ones you might expect. Uh, Deloitte, KPMG, if you are accounting oriented, Sun Life Financial or Manual Life, if you're uh, finance oriented. Although as it turns out, even if you're finance oriented, you might be hired by Deloitte or KPMG in consulting. Even if you're accounting oriented, you of course might be hired by Sun Life Financial or Manual Life. And we also have uh, employers, and there's a lot more than this, thank goodness they didn't list the whole set, uh, at our hospital systems, in our government, the Ministry of Transportation, of course, our big banks. And McKinsey, if you're not familiar with the uh, company, uh, as an example, is a big consulting firm. So um, these are, uh, and as I say, there are, I don't know how many employers, I'll say hundreds, I don't really know. I guess it's probably over a thousand. Don't know about that. However, the point is um, there are placements at uh, employers who are well-respected and may be your final um, destination. There is a co-op fee. Um, seems like a pretty good deal. You know, I'm in finance and my job is to calculate rates of return. That's a good rate of return. Anyway, uh, I will suggest to you that the purpose of co-op is not first and foremost to make money, although as it turns out, you will. Um, that's the purpose of co-op, right? Um, think about it. You get job offers before you start looking for job offers. Uh, the majority or vast majority of our co-op students um, essentially you know, get job offers, not necessarily from their co-op employer, though very possible, but just having that on your resume will help you get job offers uh, elsewhere, even if it isn't from the co-op employer, although it often is. I think we're number two, uh, or we might be number one right now. I'm not sure which. Okay, how do you get in? Please take a second to have a look, then I can talk about it. There's not much I need to talk about. You get to pick which six university or mixed credits you choose to use towards your average. Otherwise, I think and hope this is uh, self-explanatory. And if it's not, please don't hesitate to ask our advisors about it. Thanks. There are all sorts of awards and scholarships. If you decide you want to apply to Ryerson, right? Um, you know, please consider taking advantage. And now I'm gonna turn this over uh, to the experts in the field uh, to um, uh, talk a little bit more about the subject. Before we get on to questions, I'm gonna turn it over to two experts uh, named Victoria and Matteo. They are students in our program, I'm not sure who's going first. And they're gonna spend a couple of minutes introducing themselves and telling you a bit about who they are. Thanks everybody. Hi, so I'm Victoria. I'm a third year student at Ted Rogers, an accounting major, and I decided to choose Ted Rogers School of Management, first of all, because they had co-op and I was totally intrigued by that and I wanted to be in co-op. I knew that it was a great opportunity to meet employers and to get a job. That was my first thought, not knowing how much co-op does have to offer later on. Um, the second reason was because I knew that the courses that were offered were geared towards getting my CPA. So I do want to become a CPA. And as Alan said before, um, the courses are specific to getting you up to standard for the courses that you're going to need to take. So that was another thing that I really enjoyed. I thought that that was really cool because I wasn't going to have to take general accounting courses that were going to start me off right at the beginning. I kind of knew some accounting, so I would get to start off um, a little bit further and that would help me later. So there are requirements that need to be met for those courses, but that's basically, those are the two reasons that I wanted to join in the first place. So I am in co-op. I'm, I'm doing my second term in January. So I applied when I finished first year and that was in June. The requirements were the three CGPA and the interview. The interview was if I was just talking to a um, professor, an advisor, they're really helpful. No need to be scared or worried about that. But 
co-ops really great. And once you do get in, um, there's so much help through the business career hub, which is a place that you can go ask advisors, any questions, they'll look at your resume. Um, I know they fixed mine a bunch of times before I started applying to any co-op positions. Um, so I did get a job at more general, um, just a, a place that sold legally blind medical devices for people. I got that and I was a financial intern. And now I'm going to be working for the government of Canada coming up in January as an audit intern. So that's more my stream. And I'm really excited about that. Um, auditing is one of the main focuses of an accountant in the beginning. So I'm excited to do that. Um, some student groups that I've joined is when I first came to Ryerson, I didn't really know anybody. I came by myself, no friends from high school. So I decided to join DECA because that was something I did in high school. That wasn't a requirement for DECA, but I thought that that would be something that I kind of knew. So I was, I thought that was great. So I joined DECA and for those who don't know what DECA is, it's a business case competition. So you get to choose an area of focus that you wanted to do and you get to answer a case about it. You get to go to a fancy hotel, um, present in front of judges, network with industry professionals and your own colleagues like peers. You get to make new friends. Um, the first year, actually, I didn't um, do a case in accounting because they told me that it might be a little too difficult. I actually did a case in fashion, which I know nothing about. But it was really fun to uh, get to know that, get to know people to work with and do that. Um, I also uh, joined a sorry, joined a student group called Ryerson Formula Racing. This has nothing to do with business. I found it on a flyer and I wanted to join. It's an engineering club that focuses on business and engineering. They build a formula race car. Um, in this club, I basically was a business lead and I conducted a business presentation for the competition that they compete in, but I also got to learn some engineering. So that was really cool that I got to do both. I was obviously more focused on the business side, but I mean, they were really helpful and they taught me a lot about the car and racing and all that. So that was something that I wasn't expecting to be in, but because I, I just felt that that was something that I wanted to do, I went to go check it out and I stayed on the team and I got, I worked my way up to becoming a lead. And lastly, another student group that I want to talk about is the top 200 program. So um, I was approached by a professor who thought that I would be good for the top 200 program, which is a program that chooses 200 students, of course, um, to be in a leadership uh, involvement program. So you get to hear from speakers, you get personal interview uh, skills, you get personal meetings with the advisors, and you get basically a one-on-one -on -one little community where you can talk to people, you can make new friends even from there. And that's in third year. So you can apply for that in third year. Um, also, I just want to talk about pieces of advice that I would give if you guys are looking to, if you guys, when you come to Ryerson, first, um, join Facebook group chats. So download Facebook, get on there and join your group, your class, because a lot of people talk on Facebook and you don't want to miss out on any, um, friends that you can make through there or people you can communicate if you miss a date, if you miss something that some a professor had said. Um, also, checking your email is super important. I mean, I have notifications that come up on my phone every day um, when emails are sent. Professors talk through email. Most of the important dates are sent through email. All stuff about co-op is sent through your email. So make sure you have a notification on that. And basically, um, I know it's scary. You might not know anything that was just said from Alan. You're confused, you're worried, you're scared. I was in the exact same position as you and now I'm talking to you about it. So, I mean, I knew nothing. I did not know who the big four firms were when I was joining Ryerson. I didn't know anything really about accounting. I wasn't 100% sure I wanted to do accounting, but after being in the program and getting to talk to people, making friends, talking to business uh, advisors, I totally know that this was the program and it was an amazing choice and I would never go back and choose another school. So that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to Mateo. Uh, thank you. Thank, thanks, Victoria. And uh, hi everyone, my name is Mateo. I'm in my final year of study. I'm gonna be majoring in finance and I'm gonna be minoring in economics. And I'm also a part of the co-op program, which I just completed this past summer with uh, RBC Capital Markets. and. As Alan mentioned, uh, I'll be one of those, you know, nine out of 10 students with a full-time job offer prior to graduation. Uh, I'll be joining RBC next July as uh, a part of their investment banking division. 
And, you know, I truly enjoyed my time throughout the um, accounting and finance program. I think stepping back for a moment, the main goal of any student, I think, is to secure full-time employment. And I do believe that this program is structured to do just that. So why did I choose TRSM and in particular accounting and finance? First of all, it's a balanced academic approach. So students are exposed to both studies off onset. And, uh, you know, you're going to gain this knowledge in both accounting and finance right from the get go. But it's not going to be high level. It's going to be quite granular. And I think it's, that's incredibly important for students to develop a solid foundation in both just because of how interrelated one and another are. Uh, even though you might not see it right away. So for instance, as I mentioned, I am a finance major, but I, you know, countlessly look back on all my accounting notes to this day. So um, that, it's great that you get exposure to both. And it's also, it's a very deep and, and um, uh, wide exposure in terms of what you're learning. As mentioned, uh, we have an integrated co-op program, which I think allows students to build their resume and grow their professional network at a very early stage of their career. It's also great because it's offered year round, which makes it extremely easier for students to securely, secure highly sought after positions during the winter and fall semesters. And you know, as Alan mentioned earlier, it's competitive and it's growing. Every year, uh, the school is adding more coveted jobs and the velocity of students attaining these jobs is also accelerating. The coursework itself, I think is great because it, it uh, incorporates industry-wide resources. So courses utilize and build upon a professional skill set. There are several courses offered that encourage students to think critically on their feet, outside the box, all of which I think are extremely vital to the real world. And you also have access to resources that are transferable to the real world. You have you know, Excel, which is woven right into your accounting and your finance courses. You have access to Bloomberg and Capital IQ, which are industry standard type of resources for those of you who wish to pursue the finance route. And you also have location. I think this is one of, um, it's a less talked about point, but I do think it's incredibly important because we're one of the only schools that is truly walking distance from um, Canada's financial hub. And it provides students the chance to network with industry professionals and learn more about their respective interests. And then finally, we offer professional student groups. We have several student groups that um, are available that cater specifically to staff students. You have the Ryerson University Accounting Society, for those of you who are interested in accounting, you have um, the Ryerson University Finance Society and the Ryerson Investment Group, which uh, for those of you who are interested in finance, and um, I myself am actually the president of the Ryerson Investment Group. And I joined in, in my very first year uh, and it's been a long road, but. I, uh, you know, looking back on it, I, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today if, if I hadn't done that. So I definitely echo what Victoria said about, you know, joining student groups, getting involved, going above and beyond and making the entire experience that much more beneficial. But all these student groups, I think, help each and every one of you further develop your own professional, social and academic skill set. And uh, I think that's it from me. So I'll pass it back off to um, the moderator for, for Q&A. Hi, I'm going to pop on as well. Um, so I was introduced in the beginning of the session. My name is Catherine Hollis. I work at the Ted Rogers School of Management. I am one of the recruitment coordinators for the faculty. And I just wanted to say hello. Um, I've seen lots of questions in the Q&A about the requirements, I'd encourage you to look through those answered questions because um, our staff in the background are answering those uh, for you. So that will be in there. And please do also look at the website. Um, if you look in those questions, there will be links to our admissions website. And all of that information is there for you. Um, clarification on your required courses. So for your required courses, uh, which for the School of Accounting and Finance, you do need, this is Ontario educated students, um, you do need that English course, uh, you do need functions and you do need calculus. In those courses, the required grade 
is a minimum of 75%. Um, that's the minimum requirement for those courses. Your required courses are not necessarily a part of your top six. So your top six, if you have um, the 75 or 78 in your required courses, and then all of your other top six marks are higher than that, for admissions purposes, we only look at those top six grades. Um, I have also seen students asking about what other required courses are there. There aren't necessarily any required courses. If your school does offer accounting courses or economics courses, I have heard from our students that those are helpful, but they're not mandatory. And in your first year, you will have introductory courses that will go over that material for you. So um, just focus on doing the best that you can in those top six courses to position you well for, um, for admission. I'm gonna pass it back to Samantha. Um, right now, we're going to do some live Q&A with myself, our two students, and Alan. Um, so if you have questions for our students, uh, please feel free to ask those in the Q&A box. You can designate um, who you'd like to answer questions and we'll do our best to answer as many questions that you have as possible. We are here to support you through this journey. Sam, go ahead. Amazing. Thank you, Catherine. So first question is going to be something for um, our awesome students, because we had a question about um, co-op from home during the pandemic. So if you've participated in co-op um, at home, what has that experience been like for you? Um, <laughs> I, can, I can start. So I did do um, some co-op from home last semester, which was cut in March. So I did work from home. I mean, it was still, it wasn't being in person, obviously. I mean, you're not sitting at a desk, but I got to still talk on meetings. Zoom meetings was really helpful. So it wasn't as hard as you might think it could, would be. I mean, like people are really, um, usually when you're a co-op student in a workplace, they know you're a co-op student. They're not going to take like, they're not going to be like super hard on you. They know you're working from home. They're always open to asking, like, at least at where I work, they always took my questions and they were really helpful with that. They made sure like I felt welcome. So usually the co-op places have good relationships with Ryerson and they're really nice to their co-op students. They're very like understanding. If you have any problems, they're going to uh, help you out. So I think it was pretty good experience for me. <laughs> yeah, l likewise, I uh, I completed two two co-ops uh, during during the pandemic. One of which got cut in the middle uh, during during the winter, and then one uh, this past summer, which is completely online right from onset. And similar to Victoria, I mean, all of the uh, employers were extremely helpful. Uh, they understood. They were you know trying their best to make it. Uh, the, the most beneficial for myself and uh, for other co-op students and uh, net net. I think it was, it was, uh, it was manageable. Uh, obviously it took some getting used to, but there's also some benefits of uh, working from home as well. So um, I don't think it's anything to be too worried about. And uh, yeah, I, I would encourage each and every one of you who are interested in co-op to, to definitely apply as soon as you're, you're done first year. Well, I'm so glad to hear it's been positive and I think it's great that our students are also rather resilient um, and they're still able to get these opportunities which is really exciting. We also had a question from a student um, they're curious if it's difficult to manage co-op and school so maybe can you talk a little bit about like the um, in school out of school and if you have taken um, a course while you're doing co-op and if you have what that experience was like. Yeah, so um, co-op is basically split up through semester. So you're doing a semester in school and then you're doing a semester out of school where you're working at the place that you got selected to work. Um, so you're not really managing any courses while you're in co-op unless you want to. So unless your um, placement allows you to take a course while at Ryerson, you can take one or two courses. But I mean, I wouldn't take you're not going to take a full course load. So you're not going to have like all these assignments and homework that you're going to have to complete while you're at work. When you're at work, you're just doing the stuff for work. So you're working if it's a nine to five. That's it. That's your school for the day. So and then you'll go back and you'll complete the next semester in the summertime. 
So you're not going to be doing any of the schoolwork. I did take one course. It was a French course um, while I was working at my placement. I mean, it was at night. So I did it through um, the Chang School of Continuing Study, not exactly through Ryerson. Um, it's just a separate like continuing education. But it was so they offer courses at night. So after I finished work, I would go to Ryerson and I would sit from six to nine, do French and then go to work the next day. I mean, I wouldn't go to school. And then I continued that online when it when it, the pandemic hit. So you can take I would recommend maybe one course if they allow you. You have to get a signed form, a form signed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, but you're not going to have to manage like a major course load while you're working. I think it's great that you also work quite closely with co-op advisors. No, can you talk maybe a little bit about um, that process too and the experience that you've both had working um, with your co-op advisors and the co-op office within uh, Ted Rogers? Sure, yeah, I can, I can start there. I remember my, my very first co-op actually, uh, it, it was getting close to, to the summer placement and I was kind of biting my nails because uh, I didn't have anything lined up and uh, it just so happened I had two interviews um, back to back uh, on, on two separate days. And I ended up getting the one on, on, the pre on the first day. And I remember interviewing the second day and I really wanted that co-op. And I didn't hear back from that firm yet, but I made it well known to my co-op advisors. Like this was the situation I'm in. I have an offer on the table, but uh, you know, I much rather prefer the second role. And you know, they went out, contacted both employers, let them know what the situation was and helped facilitate that whole process to ultimately um, get me that second co-op that I did desire and I did want. So without them, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do that. So they've been incredibly helpful. Um, you know, they come in, they check, they check in on you every term to make sure you're enjoying the term. If you have any concerns to voice it to them. So they're, they're incredibly engaged throughout the process. They want you to exceed. Uh, you're, you'll normally get uh, emails from your co-op advisor asking how you're doing you know, asking if there's anything they can do on their end, check your resume over workshops, et cetera. So I do think uh, it's a very uh, professional um, uh, group that's, that's working as, as the co-op advisors and they're there to, to help each and every one of you um, meet your, your aspirations and, and goals. Um, from my experience, I just want to let like say that I think one of the things that helped me the most was uh, mock interviews. So doing like a fake interview before your real interview. I had never really interviewed for a professional setting, like a corporate setting job. So it was good to do um, a pretend one before I did my real interview. I mean, they just ask you questions that they think your employer would ask based on the job description. And they tell you, okay, you can fix this. Try not to say um as much stuff like that, that just will like tweak it just to make you stand out the most. So I think that was really, really helpful. And something that my co-op advisor did with me. Um, they also, she also um, was able to talk to different people if like interview times didn't work or something was conflicting with my schedule. So they're great for all co-op needs. <laughs> Amazing. And I know both of you talked a little bit about this, but we did have a student asking what makes Ryerson's accounting and finance program different from other universities. So can you kind of just talk a little bit about maybe what you think differentiates um, our school or what makes our school kind of stand out? And I guess it kind of ties into like why you ultimately decided to choose Ryerson, which again, I know both of you talked a little bit about. Sure. Yeah, I, I could I could start. Um, I'll just summarize what, what I said earlier, because I, I do think all my points were, we're, we're trying to sell sell the school. Um, so look, I think I think we offer the balanced academic approach, uh, you know, relative to some other schools, you might not get accounting or finance exposure till your second or even third year. Here, you're going to get exposure to both right from uh, day one. Also, you have the integrated co-op program, which is offered year round, which makes it a little bit easier for, you know, attaining your first co-op uh, internship, which, which is, you know, it is difficult to do, but since, you know, it is offered in the fall and the winter, I think it makes it much more easier for students to get those highly sought after positions. You have the practical coursework that actually incorporates uh, resources and practical skills that you'll utilize in the workforce. Again, you know, Excel, uh, Bloomberg, Capital IQ, these are all things that, you know, you can learn and, and apply to your co-ops and, you know, to full time. I think location is incredibly important as well. I, I, I've had numerous coffee chats with industry professionals and it was just so easy to do so because, you know, you simply say, hey, can you meet at 
Starbucks at, you know, this location uh, and, you know, it's at their lobby of their office. So it's um, not a hassle from their end. And then you have the student groups, which I think are incredibly important because you're going to be surrounded by a group full of people with similar passions and interests. And, um, you know, collectively, uh, I think that's why, you know, our school is differentiated and offers a very unique experience relative to other schools. And again, as I said earlier, I think the main goal of any student is to secure full-time employment and, and this program is built to do so. So not to repeat what Matteo just talked about, but the courses, yes, are always they're geared towards your CPA, CFA designation, which is really helpful. But something that I don't think we really talked about was there are boot camps that are offered at, uh, at Ryerson that you can take um, that will teach you about Excel, that will teach you about Bloomberg. I mean, I didn't know how much I didn't know about Excel before I took this boot camp, right? They tell you, oh, you can make all these special tables, you can do all of this stuff. So then when I did enter my first co-op term, I was like, oh, I know how to do that. Like, it was, I had already learned it at Ryerson. So that was a really good experience. I mean, Bloomberg, um, it's very, like, it's not easy. I mean, if you're just like, looking at it right away, you're not going to know how to use Bloomberg um, just from coming from high school. I mean, we didn't have any labs in high school. I didn't know about Bloomberg. I didn't even know about Bloomberg was until I started taking finance. So um, programs like that, like teaching you how to actually use these specialized programs is really, really helpful. And you can get certified um, on your LinkedIn if you take some of these uh, Excel's. Uh, boot camps. So they'll give you a sticker on your LinkedIn that you can put on that people can endorse. And then industry professionals can also see, oh, wow, Victoria took Excel or Power BI and she did it at Ryerson, which is really cool because it shows that you have like an extra level of that learning. So yeah, boot camps are really important. And I think that's also what sets up. I'd never heard of a boot camp before. I don't know if other schools do boot camps, but I know that Ted Rogers is specializing and they make sure that you, you get um, a certain amount of boot camps and that they're really, they're offered a lot. So you have a lot of opportunities and chances to join boot camps. I know even faculty and staff members like myself, we actually are able to take advantage of the boot camp. So Python and Excel, it's, it's amazing. It just opens up so many different things for us. So um, we had a question and I don't know if Catherine, maybe you wanted to answer this unless our students know this, but um, it was flagged to answer live. Is there a required amount of hours you need to complete during a co-op work term? So co-op, um, I can, I can take a stab and then if anybody else wants to jump in, they can add to this. It's in a university setting, co-op is very different than high school. Um, so I think in high school, you have 160 some on hours that are required for co-op. In university, there's a minimum number of work terms um, in order to graduate with a co-op designation. So for the Ted Rogers School of Management, if you're a full-time student, which co-op is only offered to our full-time students, uh, you have to complete a minimum of three work terms. And uh, I think we mentioned this earlier on, but while you're doing a work term, you are working full-time um, and not in school. And then when you are in school, you, if you need to work um, part-time or have a, a job to supplement your income, you are certainly allowed to do that. That is not a part of the co-op program. So you're in school full-time when you're not on a work term. And they, there's a certain sequence depending on which program you're in. Um, so it's a minimum of three work terms, but I think you can work up to four or five work terms, depending on your program, um, but not necessarily an, the number of hours. Mateo or Victoria, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, uh, <laughs> I think you said it uh, quite well. I mean, look, uh, w what I would say in terms of, um, you know, the hours itself, I think it fluctuates with whatever job you're going to be working, uh, you know, what firm you're with and what job it, you're, you're working for. So, I mean, for instance, in my last term, uh, I was working in, in capital markets, which tends to be a little bit more uh, demanding. So, I mean, my, my hours were a little bit more demanding relative to my other co-op internships, but it, it all depends on where you're working and who you're working for. We had a student asking, um, do we get compensated in co-op? So you're both, are you getting paid to do co-op? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. You get compensated. It's um, they're usually like pretty good above minimum wage jobs. I mean, as you continue to move up and get more experience, you get paid more. So, I mean, it's always good, um, especially like if you're working for a well-known firm or a well-known um, uh, any, anywhere like bank, then you're going to get higher, higher pay. Yeah. So not only are you like getting your foot at the door uh, in the door at a couple of different places, but you're getting paid for the work that you're doing. So if you're not understanding it, we think co-op is like an amazing opportunity that we really do encourage you to get involved with. Um, I would want to go back to boot camps because we just had a question for some clarification. So a student is wondering, um, or a person I should say is wondering, are boot camps like clubs or a separate course? <laughs> well, me and Victoria are, are unmuting at the same time, but uh, I, I, I could I could take that. They're they're different. Uh, the boot camps are offered through the, the VCH. And, uh, you know, you can sign up for those uh, whenever it fits your schedule best. I myself was actually a Bloomberg facilitator as well for, for a boot camp. So I, for, I forgot to mention that. So uh, I, I know a thing or two about boot camps, but yeah, they are completely different. Uh, they are offered year round, the boot camps. And for student groups, same thing. They're offered year round, but, you know, student groups tend to be focused on a certain niche. So again, for the Ryerson Investment Group, we're focused on a certain, you know, uh, subset of finance and, uh, Ryerson University uh, Accounting Society's focus on accounting and each student group will necessarily maybe they'll meet weekly or they'll host events, you know, maybe once a month, twice a month, whatever uh, you have it. So they are different. Um, and but I, but the two of them go hand in hand together. I also just wanted to mention really quick that the boot camps aren't uh, the Something else that sets them apart is I can finish an Excel boot camp in one day, whereas a student group I'm going to participate in through the whole year, right? So you're not going to be doing an Excel boot camp every month or anything like that. You can finish Excel, you can tick it off, and then you can move on to the next boot camp. That's a great clarification and a great way to put it. Um, we have a student just confirming um, when the time to apply for co-op. So you apply for these co-op programs after your first undergraduate year. That was a question. Yeah, so I think it's in June when you apply after your first year. And then whether you choose um, accounting or finance is, is kind of when you choose your co-op. So if I'm choosing co-op, I have to choose then my major. So I chose accounting, so I did accounting co-op. And then all the accounting jobs pop up on my co-op portal and all of them, you can see all the accounting jobs that are geared towards accounting majors. Perfect. And then we did have a student say, uh, is there a non-co-op program as well? If so, do we apply to one or both? And I'm happy to answer that a little bit. Um, co-op, not mandatory. I know we're saying it's great, but you know what? Some students don't want to do co-op and that's totally okay. It's all about what's best for you. But when you apply on the OUAC, you're not choosing a co-op option when you apply. You're just going to choose um, accounting and finance at that time. And then as you join us at Ryerson and as you go through first year, I'm sure there's different like seminars about co-op and there's information sessions and things like that. So you'll hear about it, you'll know what the requirements are to participate in the co-op. And then if you'd like to apply for co-op, you'll be able to do that as um, Victoria mentioned after that first year of study. So um, keep in mind, you don't have to do a co-op, but we just think it's a really great opportunity and we definitely have it for those students who are interested in participating in co-op. And then I'm going to answer one more question and I think we're just about at the end of time. So we have had a couple of questions about whether we look at grades taken from summer school differently than our normal day school course. We do not. If you're taking a school or if you're taking a course at a ministry approved school, we will consider it equally um, as a school taken at a day school course. If you're repeating courses, we'll look at the highest of the repeated course. But again, it has to be taken at a ministry approved school. So please keep that in mind. Oh, I will ask one more question um, because you both can answer this. Can you talk a little bit about your class sizes? So what your class sizes look like uh, typically? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I mean, now it's all virtual, so it could be uh, it could be unlimited. But uh, no, normally in, in class in, in the classes, it, it, it ranges. You could have a lecture in one of the big lecture halls, which will hold anywhere from 200 to 300 students. But more so, you're going to be in a, in a lecture hall that, that, that is more um, smaller. So class sizes ranging from maybe to 50 to 75 students. So, you know, I think each and every one of you will have an ample opportunity to get to know your professor and, and your professor to know you. And 
you know, should you choose to do so, you can develop, you know, quite a good relationship with your, with your professors, given that majority of them will be your professor throughout your university tenure. So I remember like, for instance, Alan, Alan, I, uh, you know, he was my professor and I think first year or second year, and I had him again in, in fourth year. So um, you'll have quite a few classes with uh, your different pr professors. So it's important to build that relationship as well. And you're able to do so given the class sizes. Yeah. And I think even the bigger class sizes that Mateo talked about, they're more like in the general uh, courses. So you're not going to be taking like if you're taking a general course, you're taking with a bunch of students. Whereas if you're taking like an accounting or finance course that's specific to SAF, you're you're going to be with a certain amount of students and you're going to see familiar faces. You're going to see, oh, I've, I've had this person in my class before or you, I know this person. And it's great at Ryerson um, that professors they they remember you and I know a lot of teachers scared me in high school like you're just gonna be a number no one's gonna know you like you're never gonna be like professors don't care like professors do know you they reach out to you they remember your name especially like if you're engaged in class and you're willing to answer questions so I think um yeah just don't be scared about that uh Ryerson's really helpful and sometimes the high school teachers scare you for no reason <laughs> Amazing. Well, I think we are at time now. So I just want to say thank you so much to Mateo and Victoria and to Catherine and to Alan for representing accounting and finance and just giving us a little bit more insight into the program. And I hope that was helpful for the folks who um, attended and asked so many amazing questions and gave you a little bit more idea of what your life is going to look like here at Ryerson University. So we will be shutting down our audio and our um, video, meaning you won't be able to see or hear us, but we'll definitely still be on hand for a couple more minutes to clear through any um, last questions that you might have. So if you do have any last minute questions, you can put them in, but do so um, promptly because we are just over time. Also note that you're not going to get a copy of the um, answered questions. So if you had a question answered, you might want to quickly take note of that and write that down um, just so you have reference to that. On behalf of Virus University, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you continue to stay safe and we hope to see you at some of our virtual sessions that are coming up. Bye now.